Hello, this video is a response to Dorpaton's video on uh, the various possible resolutions to the black hole information paradox. His position is, of course, that uh, these are separate solutions to the black hole information paradox than the holographic principle, and so therefore we don't need the holographic principle. Uh, the funny thing about this is, is that uh, many of these so-called other solutions are not actually other solutions at all, but actually entail the holographic principle being true. Okay, so uh, let's look at the first of these. Uh, number one is, uh, he says, information leaks out with black hole evaporation. And it turns out that this is actually true. This is due to Hawking radiation. Basically, you have a quantum fluctuation on the surface of a black hole, and a portion of it falls into the black hole and cancels out with some of the energy on the interior of the black hole, and the other half escapes with the equivalent amount of energy. And so as a result, information leaves with the radiation, and at the same time, the black hole's size shrinks because there's less energy in it. Uh, the funny thing about this is, though, is that this corresponds directly to the holographic principle, right? You have information leaving the black hole, and as a result, the black hole's size shrinks. The surface of the event horizon shrinks, and the event horizon, according to the holographic principle, is exactly equal to four times the entropy. So, of course, if the holographic principle is true, as information leaks out due to Hawking radiation, it's going to naturally shrink, so as to keep the S, we, S equals A over 4 uh, limit. Now, we already know that the black hole is going to shrink as Hawking radiation leaks out of it, because Hawking radiation reduces the amount of energy or mass content in the black hole. So, you know, since the black hole's event horizon size is determined by its amount of mass or energy, it's going to automatically shrink the black hole. Now, the funny thing is, is if the Hawking radiation did not leak inform information out of it, it would actually violate the holographic principle, because you then have the same amount of information staying in the black hole as the black hole size shrinks. So then you actually have more information in there than predicted by the holographic principle limit. So this means that number one is not a different solution, it's actually the same solution as the holographic principle. Uh, number two is that the all the information leaks out of the black hole all at once at the final stages of black hole evaporation. So the black hole is kind of shrinking along and getting smaller and smaller, and then all of a sudden it explodes out and dumps all the information all at once. Uh, now this violates the Bekenstein bound, and the Bekenstein bound is a proven law, so this one is not an option. The third option is that the black hole shrinks down and there is a Planck size remnant left over and all the information is stored in that. And of course this puts an arbitrary amount of information into a tiny amount of stuff, and so this also violates the Bekenstein bound, and so this one cannot be an alternative either. Alternative 4, which is actually the same as the alternative as uh, number 17, is that information is stored in a massive remnant that appears there once basically the black hole stops shrinking, and then after that all remaining information is stored in that remnant. Uh, this was thought of by a Croatian scientist named Harafe Nikolic, and let's see what he has to say describing his own model. To alleviate the black hole information problem, we study a holographic principle-inspired non-local model of Hawking radiation. This is not actually an alternative to the holographic principle at all, this is inspired by the holographic principle. You can't create a holographic principle-based model and then say that it's an alternative to the holographic principle. Now, how did you miss this, Dorpaton? I mean, this is directly on his abstract, so you'd think you'd see that and then see that it's actually based on the holographic principle. The uh, fifth solution given is that the information is stored in a baby universe that gets created on the interior of the black hole, or as a result of the black hole. Now, this is certainly possible, but we don't have any really compelling reason to believe it. Uh, the holographic principle, on the other hand, we have a very compelling reason to believe it. It comes from string theory, uh, loop quantum gravity, and then straight-up black hole thermodynamics considerations. And then, plus, it, the result ties into a whole lot of different things. We have uh, Ted Jacobson's theorem, uh, it ties into quantum information theory with the Shannon entropy, and then it also gives a very neat explanation for why the universe is expanding rather than contracting. So is the baby universe model possible? Well, sure, except there's no really compelling reason to believe it either. Whereas with the holographic principle, we have a whole lot of compelling reasons to believe it, and so the holographic principle is far more likely to be true than the baby universe model. The uh, sixth solution is that information is encoded in the correlations between future and past, and when I went to Wikipedia to find this, I discovered in the references that this is actually the same as the solution of uh, 4 and 17, which is, this is, 6 is basically just 4 and 17 recycled. 
and remember, uh, 4 and 17 were based on the holographic principle, so... Number 6 assumes the holographic principle is true. The uh, seventh solution given is that unitarity uh, could possibly break down at the quantum scale when you add gravity in, and so the loss of unitarity is not a problem, and so there is no black hole information paradox. Uh, now this one, like the uh, baby universe model, could be true, but it would require new physics added, whereas the holographic principle only uses physics that we already have, and in addition there's you know, not very, very many compelling reasons to believe this, whereas the holographic principle ties into a whole lot of stuff and is a whole lot more compelling. So, could it be true? Sure, but the holographic principle is much more likely to be true. The eighth solution Dorbaton gives, which he refers to as the Hawking solution, is that information leaks out of the black hole via quantum perturbations. Now the funny thing is, this is the exact same thing as number one. Remember before, it, uh, we said that information leaks out of the black hole with evaporation? Well, how does a black hole evaporate? It's via Hawking radiation, which is actually quantum perturbations. So number eight is actually just number one recycled. And if you recall from before, number one confirmed the holographic principle. But now let's see what Stephen Hawking has to say about the holographic principle himself, to see if he actually believes it, or thinks that there is a conflict between that and Hawking radiation. Uh, this is from his book, uh, The Universe in a Nutshell, uh, I've got right here with me. He says, um, this black hole entropy is given by a very simple formula I discovered in 1974. It equals the area of the horizon of the black hole. There is one bit of information about the internal state of the black hole for each fundamental unit of area of the horizon. This shows that there is a deep connection between quantum gravity and thermodynamics, the science of heat, which, we, which includes the study of entropy. It also suggests that quantum gravity may exhibit what is called holography. Now let's see what he has to say about the holographic principle as it pertains to Hawking radiation. He says, if quantum gravity incorporates the holographic principle, it may mean that we can keep track of what is inside black holes. This is essential if we are able to keep to predict the radiation that comes out of black holes. Now this is exactly the same thing that I was saying on your page, Dorpaton. What he's saying here is that if the holographic principle is true, then it automatically follows that the Hawking radiation will leak information out as it radiates from the black hole hence allowing us to predict what that radiation will be like when it comes out. So you were super insistent before that Hawking radiation coming out with information would contradict the holographic principle, and then Stephen Hawking himself is saying that it's the exact opposite, that it actually confirms the holographic principle, if it does in fact leak out information. Now you were super insistent with this, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go with Stephen Hawking's position on the matter. The uh, ninth solution given is that, uh, according to Dorpaton, quote, that information is preserved and that Hawking radiation is not precisely thermal but receives quantum corrections. So what does this mean? Well, if we examine it, we see that precisely thermal means completely random. It acts like a perfect thermal system which is sort of an abstraction rather than giving off actual information. And then uh, what are these quantum corrections? Well, that's the information that's coming out of the black hole. So this is actually the same as 8 and 1. Uh, Dorbaton apparently quoted this from Wikipedia, so let's go to Wikipedia and see what else it has to say here. It says, since the 1997 proposal of the EDS-CFT correspondence, that's uh, Maldacena's thing, the predominant belief among physicists is that the information is preserved and that Hawking radiation is not precisely thermal but receives quantum corrections. Now, if you recall, uh, Dorbaton, you were saying that the EDS-CFT correspondence is exactly what was you know, promoting the holographic principle in the first place, the whole reason why people were believing it. Well, this is based on that. This is this is the same thing as the holographic principle. So I'm left with the impression here that you don't exactly know what you're talking about. I mean, 1, 8, and 9 are the same thing, and not only are they the same thing, but they all support the holographic principle. The tenth solution given is that Hawking radiation comes out uh, with the information, but the information is scrambled. While the Hawking radiation bringing information out is exactly the same as 1, 8, and 9, and as we would expect, if something goes into a black hole, it's going to be violently whipped around and likely come out scrambled, so that's not a surprise. <laughs> and once again, as I said before, this actually accords with the holographic principle. Uh, the eleventh solution is the quantum entanglement solution, where you have uh, a particle being destroyed in the black hole, and then that automatically, because of quantum entanglement, corresponds to a particle being created, or a positive energy particle being created outside the black hole. Well, that perfectly mirrors the idea of Hawking radiation. You have a negative energy particle that goes into the black hole and annihilates with a piece of matter there, reducing the size of the black hole, and 
a piece of information fleeing with the particle that's on the outside. So this is very similar to, actually it is the same as 9, uh, 10, and 1. The uh, twelfth solution given is the kraus stoichovitch avachi spotty solution, which basically says that uh, as you fall into a black hole, it takes an infinite amount of time to get there, because its time keeps dilating away, and as a result, the black hole evaporates, or what will be the black hole evaporates before it could ever really form. And so it essentially just stops at the, it, it, the limit to it, it stops at the event horizon. And if you think about this, this actually makes perfect sense with the holographic principle, because what does the holographic principle say? Everything's made of information, and the surface of the black hole encodes that information, and as a result, everything past that is really not there. It's a holographic projection from the event horizon, meaning there, there, there is nothing past the event horizon. It's just empty, so to speak. Now, whether the event horizon forms or just gets arbitrarily close to forming, in either one of those cases, the Bekenstein bound is still there as a limit, and the amount of information we can get out of the region before it, it turns into a black hole is still there as a limit. And as a result, the holographic principle is still true, as those two limits are the same. So this solution is completely compatible with the holographic principle. The uh, 13th solution is the gambini porto Polin solution, and um, this basically argues that information is destroyed by decoherence before it gets into the black hole. Now. It's kind of odd to have information destroyed. This is, you know, I hear this is a reasonable possibility, uh, just like, you know, the baby universe possibility, or the idea that unitarity breaks down at the quantum scale when you add gravity in, but at the same time, there's no overwhelming reasons for believing this, whereas the cases with the holographic principle, there is. So this is, you know, a possible solution, but it's not nearly as likely as being true as the holographic principle. The uh, 14th solution is the singleton Veganas zu ren solution, and this is once again based on the idea that information escapes with the Hawking radiation as it leaves the black hole, and they do this via quantum corrections and back reactions, so basically it's a little more sophisticated than just the idea that it comes out via entanglement and so forth. It's, you know, giving another mechanism for the information to come out. In any case, this implies the idea that information escapes with Hawking radiation, and then, of course, Hawking radiation makes the black hole shrink, which then makes the relation between the remaining uh, information and the new surface of the event horizon, which has shrunk, uh, exactly corresponding to the holographic principle. Now, in a different paper by Zhu Ren and Singleton, let's see what they have to say about the holographic principle here. They say, if one assumes that the apparent horizon of a FRW universe has an entropy of S equals A divided by 4, and a temperature of, okay. They're using this here as the basis of their entire paper. Now let's scroll down in this paper and see what else they have to say. Later they're applying entropy to the universe, and what they give here is, there's this SI equals pi r squared. This is exactly the same kind of approach I got when I was uh, getting the holographic principle out of my own quantum gravity model. Basically, what you're doing here is you're taking the cross-section of the black hole, equating that to the entropy, and then saying, well, 4 pi r squared is the surface area of the black hole, and so therefore, automatically, S equals A over 4. So three of the guys to this paper are in a different paper actually deriving the holographic principle. So don't tell me that they don't believe in the holographic principle, or that this is a somehow alternate solution to the black hole information paradox. The 15th solution given is the Zhang Kai Yu Zan solution, and in this one they have information leaking out of the black hole via Hawking radiation again. They say in the abstract, we show that the black hole radiation as tunneling is an entropy conservation process. This means entropy is conserved as it leaks out with Hawking radiation and the black hole shrinks, which automatically corresponds to the relation between entropy and surface area of the black hole as the black hole shrinks, hence the holographic principle. The 16th solution entails uh, information leaking out with Hawking radiation again, and so that also accords with the holographic principle. And then I want to get back to the 17th solution for just a moment here, even though I already proved that that is completely compatible and even based on the holographic principle. You see in the video here at Dorpatan, in this paper you quote, the full wave function of the universe still contains all the information, and no fundamental violation of unitarity takes place, even though the information falls into the black hole. Well, what does that sound like? That sounds just like physics of the hidden world, which is exactly what you wanted to disprove with all this. Okay, I remember I mentioned that you can 
chop the interference pattern up and the same information that generates the, the hole is located in every single point. That's exactly what Dr. Nikolic is saying here. I find it really quite incredible that this didn't even ring a bell with you. I mean, this is, this is exactly physics of the hidden world. Okay, to sum up, of the 17 so-called alternative solutions, six of them are actually repeats. That would be 1, which is equal to 8, 9, 10, and 11, and then 4, which is equal to 6 and 17. And then we have 12 of them, which are actually compatible with the holographic principle, and therefore are not true alternatives, 2 which are physically impossible, and 3 which could be true, but are not nearly as compelling as the holographic principle. I find it really quite astonishing that you didn't notice any of this throughout the entire video. You know, even though you sounded like you know what you were talking about. And of course the reason for that is most of the time you were reading off Wikipedia or paper abstracts or other people's papers and quotes in them. But you apparently had no idea that half of these solutions, or more than half of these solutions actually were completely compatible or even based on the holographic principle. You just rushed ahead to find solutions which were supposedly alternatives to the holographic principle, not even realizing that these actually confirm the holographic principle. And this is, you know, because, you know, obviously you don't like the holographic principle. You say in this one comment here that, quote, I'm not a stinking hologram. You know, this is completely close-minded here. And the funny thing is, your favorite solution, the Zeng Kai Yu Zhang solution, is one of the ones that is compatible with the holographic principle. So if you're going to hold that, you got to hold to the holographic principle as well. What you've done with this video here is you've basically shot yourself in the foot. Well, actually, that's, that's an understatement. You've You've essentially blown your foot off with a sawed-off shotgun, is a better way to describe it.